In today's video, we're going to be building a display case. It holds four of whatever the client decides he's going to display in there. It mounts on the wall. It's made completely of solid red oak. As you can see, hopefully the camera can pick that up and focus. All solid red oak. It has glass panels that are not encased, but actually they're removable. I'll show you how I did that. And on the back to mount it on the wall, it just has these simple but effective heavy duty picture frame hooks. It has a golden oak stain and three coats of lacquer as the finish. And we're gonna get started building this right now. First thing I do is head over to the table saw and cut all my pieces to the size that I need. And that's because I'm making two of these display cases. So I'm gonna have the settings all the same for both cases. That means and ensures that everything will be the same size on both of these. Setting up a stop block, I can just randomly cut piece after piece and make sure that everything is the same size without having to think about it. So you set it once, you make your cuts, and then you know that everything is gonna be correct. Now this is an interesting jig that I made and I have a video on this and that video was actually entitled T-Tracks where I showed you how to use the T-Tracks and I made this jig. And I also just recently did a YouTube short explaining how this jig works. This is basically a hands-free operation to rip thin pieces. I need these pieces to only be two and a quarter inches wide. So ripping these against the rip fence, you always have to use a push stick or you know you make sure your hands are really away from the blade and it gets a little hairy at times but with this, I can just clamp it down with the parallel rip jig and I can run it through hands-free and it makes the rips perfect every single time. So what I'm doing is I just put a flat piece of uh, plywood as a work surface on my sliding table saw and I locked the sliding table in place so that I can butt it up against there and it's not going to move as I work on the piece. Now what I've done was the uh, display case is going to be for um, these comic books that are preserved in a plastic case already. So I got the measurements from each one of those cases of the graded comic books and I oversized these scrap pieces to mimic those cases. Um, I just about a, an eighth of an inch oversized on the height and the width just so that the full thing is displayed in there and the customer told me that when they slide the comic books into the case that they have now they're very tight and have to force them in so I gave them um, about a sixteenth of an inch gap on each side so they won't have that problem they'll just slide right into the display so what we're going to do is to assemble this the reason i have it up against here like this is i notice a nice straight surface and this is a nice flat surface so what i want to do is just take the scrap like that this is one of the comic books i'm going to butt that up against there the spacer is going to go in between and now i can butt it right up against there tightly because this is oversized so there'll be a sixteenth of an inch gap on either side when the actual comic book goes into the workpiece so Butt the next one up against it. I'll butt that up against it. And this is how we're gonna just pre-assemble everything using these as spacers. And then what'll happen is, when everything comes together, everything will be perfect and perfectly square using this method that I'm doing right here. So I'm gonna start from the left and work my way to the right. So I'll just get that up against there. flush Now to keep this completely square and exactly the way we need it, I'm going to keep it 
tight like this. And this is going to be the top piece that will screw it up and allow for the comics to drop in from the top. So, we'll put some glue on each one of these pieces here. And the ends here. And then we can drop this into place. Together. So that was the back. Now this will be the front part, but then we'll make a face frame over it. And then once the face frame is on, this will be encapsulated and we'll be able to drop those books in just like that. And that'll sit against the wall just the way it is. Okay, so now I need to cut the grooves that are going to hold the glass panel. So I've just marked a location on all the pieces of where I need to make that groove. I'm switching to a dedicated ripping blade that's a full kerf, which is an eighth of an inch thick. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because it has a flat top grind and will give me a completely flat groove for the glass to sit. I won't have any of that alternate grind bevel making that little um, Batman wing style shape or Batman's ears in the groove of the wood like this would leave because those pieces of the blade are crisscrossed like this when you have the alternate bevel. The flat top grind will give me a nice level surface. The glass will drop right in because it's slightly wider than the thickness of the glass that I'm using. So I'm just going to switch this over and then I'm going to set it up to just about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little heavier than that, maybe three sixteenths, and that's where the glass will drop right into. I'm also going to remove the riving knife, and that's only for the purpose of this is a non-through cut. I would never remove the riving knife if I was making a through ripping cut because it keeps the wood from kicking back into itself and binding up on the blade and causing a kickback where the wood could shoot out the back of the saw and be very dangerous. We don't want any pinching going on. So since this is a non-through cut, and I'm just going to make that groove less than a quarter of the way through the wood, Removing this will allow me to go right over the top of the blade without hitting this bump here that it has on the top of that riving knife. Now some saws you don't have to do that. This particular saw, the riving knife is higher than the blade. So it's got to be moved. Loosen it up while I'm in here and pulls right out of the top. Okay, so I have everything ready to go to rip the groove that I need to house the glass. Now, what I'm going to do is I have the side up against the fence. I'm going to run it through here. And the safest way to do this is for me to take another piece of scrap wood and a push block and then run it through. This way, my hands are nowhere near the blade. Even though it's going to be recessed in the wood, you still don't want to take that chance of it popping through. So because of the way, uh, the nature of this construction of this display case here, I don't want to encapsulate the glass because if the client's kids break one of the glass panels, it's going to be irreplaceable because it's going to be, if it's encapsulated, you'll have to just cut the whole thing open and redo the whole face frame. And we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I like to make um, things like this with a removable glass panel. So the way I did that was obviously you saw me cut all the groups for the glass panels and I have the parts laid out. Most important thing here is that you make sure you line up your grooves when you're constructing the face frame on the case. Now we're going to just make everything flush because we cut everything to exact size. So we can take the middle pieces just for now and we can move them to the side. 
the grooves are offset. They're only uh, 3 16 of an inch into the wood this way on the frame. So I have to make sure that I get that side that has the 3 16 with the groove matching up all around so that when I install it, these grooves line up and the glass panel falls right into place. So the way I'm going to do it is first I'm going to glue and tack in the side piece with some one and a quarter inch brad nails. Then I'm going to move on to the bottom piece and I'm going to keep it flush all along as I go. And then I'm going to do the side piece here. Then I will glue and tack nail all the center pieces in place, making sure that my grooves are all exactly lined up, which they are, and everything stays flush as I nail. All right, so we're going to get started on that. And then once I am done getting that installed, then I have a strip for the top that I cut, which was just like one of these pieces with the grooves in it. But I just raised the blade and I continued to cut the piece down to the half an inch that it needs to line up on only one side of the groove. And the reason I did that was because, like I said, it's going to be a removable glass panel, but I still want to hide the top of the exposed glass. So what I'm going to do is install this here on the top above the groove and then we'll slide the panel in behind it. And then this way, if it needs to be replaced, you just slide the panel out through the top, cut a new piece, slide the new piece back in. Okay, so the face frames are all nailed in. Now all I have to do is cut the glass panels, a little finished sanding, then we can put the stain on, and before we drop the glass in, we'll put the stain on, and then we'll spray the lacquer the following day when it's all dry. So I just wanna give you a really quick look at it from the side so you can understand why I cut that top piece um, thinner than the other pieces, and that is so if you look from the top now, you can see the channel here, we're able to just drop the glass into those grooves and we don't have to worry about it being encased anymore. When the client chose a golden oak stain, so I'm applying a coat of that and then wiping the stain with a paper towel so that it makes it even. You don't have any excess uh, puddling or any um, darker spots than others. Now after the stain is dried for 24 hours, I'm spraying three very thin coats of a waterborne lacquer. I'm going to link all this stuff in the description below. To cut the glass panels, I'm using a glass cutter with a little bit of machine oil on it to give it a good lubricated surface to slide on. Just a quick scoring across the glass with a T-square to keep it straight. Then I put a scrap block of wood underneath that score line. Give it a little press and the glass just snaps perfectly. You can sand the edge a little bit if it comes out too sharp, but I didn't have to in this case. It was a clean cut. Installing these picture frame hangers on both sides of the unit to mount it on the wall and it holds well over 50 pounds. Okay, so I'm making a really simple system here. 
since the glass is removable and we don't want it to just slide out if they were to turn it over or anything like that and we don't want it to just be loose where you could just lift it up anytime you want you just take it off the wall and you remove this screw from the back with a Phillips head screwdriver and then you can lift the glass right out so just by screwing this in by hand that's it all you have to do take it out lift the panel out, replace it if you need to, or even to remove it to clean it. Okay, so as you can see, I built two of these display cases, and they are completely identical. That's what the client wanted, and they turned out great. Three coats of the lacquer finish really made this thing, you know, just the finish, just that satin sheen that you really are looking for. All right, guys, so the client was really happy with these. I sent him the pictures, and he's going to pick them up this week. So I'm going to get started on the next video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Click that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, there's a picture of a notification bell. If you hit that button, it'll notify you every time I upload a new video. All right, guys, so check the link below for tools that I used. I'm going to put in the description box there, so you can purchase those if you choose to. And um, that's it. We're going to move on to the next build. All right, guys, I'll see you there. Thanks for joining me again in the shop, and I'll see you guys next time.